Hello everyone, welcome to Everything Arsenal and this is the latest transfer news just three days to go before the transfer window closes and it's starting to heat up now between now and Friday you're going to hear a lot of news from every single team you're going to hear some rumours you're going to hear this player is in his way there you're going to hear this Chelsea player is linked to Liverpool this Tottenham player is linked to Barcelona this Arsenal player is linked to who? Like there's going to be a lot of transfer news Um, obviously some of it will be rumours but hopefully we do end up getting a forward player uh, we are currently searching for a forward player and um, Darwin Nunes is on the list now. Darwin Nunes, we will be talking about him. What do you guys think of Darwin Nunes to Arsenal? Do you rate him? Do you think uh, he would do the job for us? We'll be talking about that. Nico Williams as well is back on the news and obviously a lot of uh, the players who could end up leaving Arsenal. So let's start with this. Um, so obviously yesterday it was reported by um, Jordan Davis of The Sun that Arsenal are hoping to launch a late surge for, for this week. But the club are keen to see several other deals. So Marina and Edin Ketty have now been done. Um, we are definitely searching for a forward. So some of you believe that Arsenal is not going to sign a forward. I believe we have to. Yeah, we definitely are. We only have Harvard as a striker. Jesus is injured. You never know what injury um, it could be. Could it be at, uh, how, 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 how long the injury will be? So could it be four weeks, eight weeks? There's been talk about it being eight weeks. So that, that would be disastrous. Um, Edin Ketty has left now. So we basically only have Harvard who can play there and it's not going to play every single game so we have to have someone that play. even if Harvard was scoring 30 goals per game we have to have someone else to help him out so who will it be we've also been told by Fabrizio that Arsenal um there's a very good chance that Arsenal will move for a winger so can I see us getting both a wing and a forward a striker I can't see it. I can only see us getting one. So who will it be, though? Uh, are we going to get a forward? Are we going to get a winger? Let's start with the latest news from yesterday. Darwin Nunes. Darwin Nunes. This is the news that was reported by um, Amden yesterday. Arsenal interested in signing Darwin Nunes before Friday's transfer deadline. Player keen to move to London and work under Mikel to win trophies. Plus, Liverpool willing to sell. Improbable, but not impossible. So, obviously, I knew the moment I saw Darwin Nunes could potentially end up at Arsenal. Arsenal, there would be a meltdown because um, of his performances at Liverpool. Like, since he joined Liverpool, like, the two seasons he's played for Liverpool so far, like, there's, like, a 20-minute compilation of the, the way he's been missing chances. Like, that is how bad it is. Like, I think he even broke the record of, like, hitting the post the most times in a single game. Like, like it's been it's been terrible for him, like, to the point where even Liverpool fans are saying, I know what, Benfica scammed us, you know, we shouldn't really have gotten this player, uh, we paid too much money for him. They paid around 70 million for him. But the season when Benfica um, had him, he scored 26 goals in 28 games. So he was really, really good. And it's it depends. Is it true? Um, are we actually going to go for Nunes? Is it false? Now, Timmy's and Ticks has come out and said there's no chance we're going to go for Nunes. And I also believe, anyway, Liverpool are not going to sell Arsenal a player. doesn't matter whether they're good or bad. I can't see him selling, um, selling, uh, seeing them sell, sell a player to Arsenal. They see us as a com as competition for top top two, top three there. They see us as um, Premier League challengers next to them. Even if it's fighting for top four, we are there with Liverpool. So I can't see them giving us a player. But two years ago, before Nunes joined Liverpool, we were actually linked to him. So this was a tweet from two years ago, and uh, this is what Fabrizio had to say two years ago. Arsenal explored the opportunity of Jonathan David and spoke with Darwin Nunes' agent in January. So... And Haaland, actually, we are, we are linked to Haaland. That's interesting. Haaland is not a realistic option for Arsenal this summer. It never was. Like, at that time, Haaland to Arsenal, we had finished, like, fifth in the tip. No chance. But we were linked to Nunes before. We were linked to Nunes when he was a Benfica player. And this Nunes at Benfica was really, really good. But you can say that about a lot of players coming from Portugal and Netherlands and all those countries. But we've seen a lot of players leaving Benfica and they, uh, you know, they end up performing terribly for their teams. Darwin Nunes, Enzo Fernandez, uh, Dra Felix, and all those guys. But since Nunes joined Liverpool, the first season he played 29 games in the league, he scored nine goals. And in the second season, which was last season, he played that six games and scored 11 goals. 18 goals in all competitions, 54 games um, he played in total last season. So um, would Darwin Nunes be the answer to Arsenal? I don't think so. As I've always said, I was one of the people who, you know, two years ago, one year ago, I didn't really feel like we needed a striker. Even now, I'm, I'm still not going to use the word need. Now that players are out and players are injured, yes, we do need. But right at the beginning of the transfer window, I still refuse the, uh, to use the word need because I still feel like Arsenal can score five, six goals per game. But I still wanted a striker to take us to the next level. That is what I've always said. I want a striker who's going to take us to the next level because that is the only thing that Manchester are beating us with. They have Haaland and you don't really have anyone. So to compare 
compete with Man City, compete with Real Madrid and Bayern Munich, we need a striker to take us to the next level. Uh, not need a striker because that's not going to struggle for goals. You get the difference. So do I feel like Nunes is a striker to take us to the next level? I don't think so. I don't think I don't think Nunes is a striker to take us to the next level. Now, will he want to score more goals than maybe most of our strikers will? You know, Jesus uh, said himself that you know, you know, he does really focus on the goals. Maybe Nunes would want that, but he does miss a lot of chances. He's going to get himself into the right positions and all that, but he would miss a lot of chances. As I said, there's like a whole comp compilation of him like missing chances the last um, two seasons. Like it's um, it's been terrible for him. He has not really enjoyed himself. The only positive I would say about him, the two positives I'd say is um, or three positives he's played in in the Premier League now for a couple of years. Number two, he'll get himself into the right positions, although he'll miss those chances. And number three, the fact that he can play as a striker and as a wing as well, that would be great. But um, apart from that, mm, and maybe the fact that he can stay fit, he played 54 games last season, but the fact that he misses a lot of chances, Arsenal fans already are critical of um, Edin Kete and Jesus and Harvards and uh, Martinelli for missing those chances. So are we going to add um, Darwin Nunes, another player who's going to potentially miss a lot of chances? I don't think this is the striker to take us to the next level. On top of that as well, confidence you know we had to we had to wait, give Harvard like six seven months before he started scoring those goals and assisting um you know we needed to give him time before he was confident so Nunes would be probably the same we'd have to give him until February to get the confidence up we don't really have time for that we need a striker who's you know at the top of their game right now and they want to score goals from now they're going to begin scoring goals from right now so Darwin Nunes has been linked though let's see how that one goes do I see it happening no I can't see Liverpool giving a player to us I can't see Man City giving a player to us right now and vice versa i cannot see it happening so striker that is a striker that's been talked about today but what about the winger nico williams is still in the news so could it still happen could he end up doing it like um we did with thomas party we went and activated the release clause on the very final day so this is the latest on nico williams um according to graham bailey Arsenal would be more than happy to meet nico williams release clause but as of yet he hasn't shown any willingness or desire to move to england this summer so that is what Graham Bailey has said. A couple of days ago, it was reported that uh, by Charles Watson, Tim News and Ticks that Nico Williams never actually said no to us. So he never actually gave an answer. He didn't say yes or no. So maybe that opportunity is still there. But again, as I've always said, Nico Williams, I don't even expect him to leave Spain. Uh, if he leaves Bilbao, I'd expect him to go to Barcelona. But that as well is not going to happen. So it looks like he's going to stay at Bilbao. But still, reports are suggesting that he could end up at Arsenal before the transfer window closes. And that would be interesting. Nico Williams would definitely bring more goals and more assists to the team. Will bring more quality for sure. If we have the chance of signing Nico Williams, I'll take him for sure. Liverpool were mentioned before as a, as a target, um, as a team target, targeting him. Chelsea were mentioned before, and uh, this is also uh, this was also reported yesterday. Arsenal's now one number one target has been changed all window. Hasn't changed all window. How is that so hard to read? Arsenal's number one target hasn't changed all window, and that's Nico Williams. Could play, uh, could pay the price for holding on for him. Three days left. I'm confident they will sign a forward with this Nico or not. Um, time will tell. I think we will sign a forward player as well. Who I cannot predict. You know, I cannot tell you whether it's going to be Osman last minute. I can't tell you whether it's going to be Yokores last minute. I can't tell you whether it's going to be Ivan Ferguson. I can't tell you whether it's going to be Nico Williams, whether it's going to be Darwin Nunes, whether they're going to get a Dinger and a striker. I, I don't know, but it's great to know that Nico Williams is still in the picture. He got a new number this season at Bill Bar, so that is that is going to make it even more difficult. But hey, you never know with these transfers. I think we're definitely going to sign a forward player. Atta himself said you don't have enough players. Yes, you don't have enough players. You, you can't just go into the season with one strike and have us to play every single game. It is not possible. Uh, we have a lot of Champions League games this time. Basically, the new Champions League group stage is no group stage, but the new Champions League group stage, we're going to have fixtures of that in January. So the usually the group stage ends in December, then the knockout starts in February. This time, the first eight fixtures will go all the way to January. So there's going to be a lot of games, international break there as well. So you need players to... Defensively, we're okay. Uh, midfield... We've added Merino now, but forward line, you know, we never know. Jesus is currently injured and Ketia has gone. We only have Saka, Nelson, Chossard, Martinelli and Havertz basically. So Vieira has also left. So those are not enough. If one of those players picks up an injury, if let's say if Saka misses like three, four games, then in, in big trouble. Or if Havertz has to play in midfield for some reason, you don't have anyone else to play forward. You'll have to try new things. Odegaard has a false nine. Trossard has a false nine. Martinelli up front, you'd need to try new things. But Nico Williams is still linked, as reported by Graham Bailey and Tiki Taka Corner. Let's see how that one goes. 
I said our defense is okay and it looks like it's going to be even better. Kivio looks like he's going to stay. Um, Fabrizio uh, uh, reported yesterday that Arsenal have informed Jakub Kivio and his camp that he's not for sale. Despite interest from Villarreal and Bologna on loan move, Arsenal want to keep Kivio at the club. So decision made as um, Lauda has uh, reported. I think Lauda is like a Polish um, journalist. So Kivio is going to stay. For me, that is good news. I, I did say from the beginning of the transfer window, I wanted all seven of our defenders to stay. And if Kivio is going to leave, unless you're going to get 25 to 30 million, I don't see the need of it. Let's let's stay strong in every single position. Let's have Zinchenko and um and uh Tim and Ben White are tried back, Saliba and um okay, eight defenders basically. So you can have Gabriel, Saliba, Timba, and Kivi as the center backs. Kalafia and Zinchenko on the left side, Ben White and um, Tom Yas on the right side. And in all, all those players can play several positions. You can have Ben White at center back, you can have Tom Yas at left back, you can have Timba at right back, left back, Kalafia at center back, left back. So that makes our team stronger. Looks like Kivio is going to stay, which is um, good news, I guess. And um, that means our defense is very, very solid. We were very good defensively last season, and now we've added Kalafia and Timba, and Kivio is going to stay. He's not going to play a lot of games, he's not going to get a lot of game time. But I'd like to see rotation this season, you know. There's a lot of games coming up. I'd like to see rotation. Don't play Gabriel in all 50 games. Don't play Saliba in all 50 games. No, use the entire squad. Yes, Saliba can, can play most of the majority of the games, but some games when Gabriel needs to rest, especially December fixtures around there, when you have Champions League games, Carabao Cup games, Premier League games, you don't have to play Gabriel and Saliba every single game. If you have like a Tottenham and um, an Ipswich, you can, you know, throw in Kivio to play with Saliba and such kind of a game. If a game is different and you need to bring in a, a, another defender, you can throw in Kivio, always does the job for you. Carabao Cup games are there, FA Cup games are there, so... For me, I'm happy that Kivio is staying. Absolutely don't mind it. Although there's a January transfer window, so I'd not be surprised if the players who've stayed right now end up leaving in January. Let's see how it goes. Aaron Ramsdale, what's the latest on him? Southampton will assess options for goalkeeper um, position after bylaw deal off. Um, Aaron Ramsdale remains on the list, but also wants loan his obligation to buy clause as they already 100% agreed on personal terms with Espanol goalkeeper Juan Garcia, who is waiting. So... Aaron Ramsdale is still going to go down up and up until the final day. We're not going to bring in Juan Garcia until Aaron Ramsdale does leave. Um, it doesn't doesn't make sense if you loan him out, you know, unless he goes and performs really well, and then we we sell him for thirty million or something, that five million. But as of now. If it's just a loan, doesn't really benefit us at all because, again, it's going to come back next season. Again, you're going to need to find a team for him again next season, which um, brings more problems. And um, Ghana bloggers just reported like 10 minutes ago, Arsenal exploring a deal to sign 22-year-old Wigan goalkeeper Sam Tickle ahead of Friday's deadline. England's under-21 international has emerged as one of the preferred candidates for third-choice goalkeepers. So if Ramsdale does leave... Um, we, we are going to get a second choice goalkeeper and a third choice goalkeeper because Carl Hine also left on loan. So Sutford is going to be the under-21 goalkeeper. And you don't really have any other goalkeepers to back up Ramsdale, uh, to back up Rhea. It, it's, it's, it's insane. We'll have signed like five, six goalkeepers in one transfer window. That is insane. Uh, Rhea obviously made it permanent. Nigga, then Sutford signed. Um, if you sign Juan Garcia and also sign this uh, Wigan goalkeeper called Sam Tickle, that'll be five goalkeepers in one transfer window. And in terms of transfers, in terms of goalkeepers, we also let go of Okonko. His contract ended and Carlin has moved on loan. So we'll have made like eight to nine transfer um, for goalkeepers. That would be um, crazy. But that's the latest in terms of the Arsenal needs. We're expecting a lot of movement between now and um and Friday, let's see how it goes. There'll be another video later on. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch up with you guys on the next one.